Hello and welcome to Amstead Rail's Petersburg, Virginia campus, manufacturing headquarters for Brinko Bearings and Amstead Seals and Forming. I'm Rick Louthan, Chief Operating Officer of Global Bearing Operations for Amstead Rail. Amstead Rail is employee owned and our employee owners are glad that you're here visiting with us. We, and want to make sure that your visit here is both safe and enjoyable. We created this video to give you an overview of our campus layout help you understand what you need to do to be safe while you're visiting and give our manufacturing contract partners an opportunity to understand what our expectations are of them while they perform work on our site. Amstead Rail Brinko Bearings was founded in 1949 to produce the bronze journal bearing for freight car industries. In 1959, we received approval for the product that we continue to make today for worldwide freight industries, the tapered roller bearing. We supply a majority of the North American OEM market, as well as other freight car markets worldwide. Millions of our bearings are in use today, providing dependable and reliable service in one of the world's most demanding environments. Brinko's reputation for quality, reliability, and dependability are standards for all the products we manufacture. Brinko is a company with a history of innovation. Amstead Seals and Forming was formed by technologies developed by the Brinko team and now serves not only the railroad industry, but also transportation and industrial industries. Amstead Rail has worked hard to become a leader in our industry, and that's especially true when it comes to the safety of our employees and our visitors. It takes relentless focus and commitment from each of us to ensure safety on the job for all of us. At Amstead Rail, we embrace strong safety programs, and the result is a culture that strives to keep each of us safe. Our goal is continuous improvement, and that means taking safety to the next level. We need to think about safety as much more than a checklist of do's and don'ts and rules and regulation. It's about eliminating hazards and changing behaviors before an accident or injury occurs. It's about observing workplace procedures and raising your hand to speak out to improve safety whenever and wherever possible. It's also about looking out for the safety of your coworkers and those around you, not just yourself. As you spend time with us, remember that while our environment is innovative and utilizes some of the latest technologies, we are still a heavy manufacturing industry and there are some areas that pose a danger to you if you do not have the proper information or proper personal protective equipment. Also know that if you are not adhering to our safety guidelines or have inadvertently placed yourself in a possibly dangerous situation, we encourage any of our employee owners to approach you and inform you of or help you fix any safety related concerns. Before you visit, we want you to be aware of our requirements for anyone coming onto our campus. First, our dress requirements for all visitors is that they wear a shirt with sleeves and that pant legs go down to their ankles. Cut off t-shirts, tank tops, sleeveless shirts, and short pants are not allowed. We also do not allow the taking of photos on our campus without prior permission granted by an Amstead Rail senior leader. At Amstead Rail, we respect and value all people whether they are one of our employee owners or a visitor. With that in mind, we want you to know that we will not tolerate harassment or offensive behavior of any kind in our workplace. If harassing behavior is witnessed, we will intervene and ask the offensive person to leave our campus immediately. We will also hold our visitors to our requirements for a drug and alcohol free workplace. If any visitor or contractor is involved in the use of an alcoholic beverage and or illegal drug while on our property, they will be escorted off the premises and will not be allowed to return. We also reserve the right to require drug and alcohol testing of individuals suspected of drug and alcohol use, or those that are involved in an incident resulting in an injury and or property damage on our campus. This testing must be completed within 24 hours of an incident, and the results of the testing must be reported to Amstead Rail prior to returning to our campus. Now that all the not-so-fun stuff is taken care of, there is some other information around entering, exiting, and moving about our campus that you need to know. As you enter our campus for the first time, you are required to check in with the security guard in the Human Resources Building. The security guard will issue you a PIN number. This PIN number will give you access to the campus. 
Keep this number with you at all times, as it is the only way you can get in or out of the facility. To enter or exit through one of the turnstiles, type your PIN number into the keypad before entering and exiting. It is required that you enter your PIN number as you enter and exit the campus, as this is how we keep track of who is on site. We do this because in the event of an emergency, we want to make sure that everyone is accounted for. If you enter our campus with a vehicle, you need to be aware of a few guidelines for moving about. First, pedestrians and powered industrial vehicles always have the right-of-way. Please yield to them and only proceed around industrial vehicles if you have been waved around and the conditions are safe to do so. We also have a 15 mile per hour speed limit posted throughout the campus. Please adhere to the speed limit and any other traffic signs. Finally, park your vehicle only in designated parking spaces and not on the grass. We need the grass to feed the geese, which, by the way, we allow visitors to take up to five geese home with them as a special gift to remember your visit by. Once you are on campus, be mindful of your surroundings and listen for any announcements you might hear on the overhead paging system or any alarms that could warn you of danger or the need for evacuation. If a specific event or alarm does require an evacuation, everyone should exit the plant or building that they are in and assemble at one of the muster points at each building as noted in this map of our campus. As we talked earlier, our goal here at Amstead Rail is for everyone to stay safe. To help achieve this goal of keeping everyone safe, all visitors may be required to wear personal protective equipment, or PPE, in the production areas or when they are completing tasks that require the use of PPE. The common PPE required in our production areas is ANSI-approved safety glasses, hearing protection, and steel or composite safety shoes. As a visitor, you may also be required to wear a safety vest to help us identify you as you move about the campus and to make you more visible to our industrial vehicles. While we are on the subject of industrial vehicles, you should understand the vehicles we use and a few things you should look out for. The primary industrial vehicle that is used on our campus is the forklift. These vehicles are great for moving heavy loads, but not so great for the visibility of the operator to people moving around them. Always assume that the lift driver cannot see you if you are approaching a lift. The best way to stay safe is to make sure that you have made eye contact with the lift operator before moving into a space that the lift is being operated in. To assist in the visibility of an approaching lift, we have installed blue lights that proceed and follow the lift in a beam that is 20 to 30 feet in front of or behind the lift. This is to enhance the pedestrian's awareness of an approaching lift and is particularly helpful on blind corners. This concludes the section of our video for site safety for all visitors. In the next section of our video, we will drill down into more specifics of site safety for contractors that are performing work on our campus. If this concludes your site safety training, on behalf of our employee owners, we are glad that you are here and hope you enjoy your time at our facility. Welcome to the contractor portion of our site safety training. As a contractor for Amstead Rail, you are an integral partner in our operations and we want to thank you for your commitment to our business by contributing your specialized talents and skills. Our employee owners interact daily with you and we want to ensure that everyone understands the expectations that we all have to work together safe and effectively. One of the key ways to keep the most people safe is to limit our exposure to hazards by requesting that everyone stay in their assigned work areas. This means that as a contractor, you should limit your activity on our site to the area or system that you have been requested to work on and not wander throughout the campus. As we mentioned in the first section of this video, personal protective equipment or PPE is required in most areas of our operations. As a contractor, you may determine or be advised to wear additional PPE depending on the task that you are completing. It is up to the contractor to determine the safest method for completing a task and wearing the PPE appropriate to complete the work that they are undertaking, as safe as possible. 
The safety of our employee owners must also be taken into consideration, and if any additional PPE would be required for anyone in a space being worked on by a contractor. If additional PPE becomes necessary for others in the space where you are working, the facilities manager should be notified so that proper steps can be taken to either eliminate the hazard or to mitigate the risk with a modification of PPE for those in the area. As we look at areas of contractor safety, one of the most common issues that contractors need to protect themselves and others from are hazards that can lead to slips, trips, and falls. Proper fall protection needs to be put in place for the contractor and for others that may be traveling through an area of work. This fall protection could come in the form of barricades built to prevent accidental entry into an area that contains a hazard, or by eliminating a hazard by doing things like removing obstacles from travel paths and cleaning up spills that could lead to slippery walking surfaces. An area where contractors often work that has the potential for falls are elevated surfaces. Fall protection equipment is required at Amstead Rail when working more than four feet above the ground or within six feet of an unprotected edge. If a fall hazard is present, then barricades should be constructed to warn people in the area about the hazard and to prevent them from experiencing a slip, trip, or fall. If a barricade is constructed, it must be at least 42 inches high and be made of wood, metal, or sturdy plastic fencing. It should also be properly braced. Yellow plastic tape is not an acceptable barrier against fall hazards and should only be used to make people aware of a hazard. If a contractor needs to complete work on the roof of a building, the Amstead Rail Facilities Engineer should be notified. Also, temporary guardrails or other means of fall protection must be utilized when working within six feet of the roof edge. When completing work on a roof or other elevated surface, Care should be taken to secure all materials that have the potential to fall and cause an injury or property damage. Also keep in mind that while working on the roof, nothing can be poured down roof drains, storm manholes, or door drains as these could lead to our storm water system and into nearby waterways. When elevated surfaces have to be accessed, ladders or lifts may need to be used. It should be noted that metal or wood ladders should not be used and are not permitted to be used at Amstead Rail. All ladders should also have anti-skid feet, be tied off, or otherwise secured to prevent slipping. Ladders can pose a risk to those moving around in the area underneath them, so proper precautions should be taken to keep others out of the area where overhead work is taking place. If it is necessary to work above others, additional PPE, like hard hats, should be used by those in the area to prevent injury should something fall from above. From time to time here at Amstead Rail, conditions require contractor to excavate the ground in order to install or repair piping and equipment. When this occurs, contractors performing excavations at Amstead Rail must understand and comply with OSHA 1926 subpart P including determining soil types, the type of protective systems to use, conducting daily inspections, and air monitoring for people entering an excavated site. Excavations must also be adequately barricaded and shored in accordance with OSHA requirements. During excavation activities, the contractor is responsible for shoring, sloping, benching, or providing some other means of protecting their employees in compliance with subpart P. If it is determined that an excavation is needed on Amstead Rail property, contact the facilities engineer for information on underground utilities and obstructions before beginning any excavations. Also, once an excavation has begun, the facilities engineer should be notified if any unusual material or unknown utilities are encountered while performing an excavation. It should be noted that any digging, saw cutting of concrete, core drilling, and any type of ground penetration are considered excavations at Amstead Rail. Similar to excavations, confined spaces may be encountered during your work at Amstead Rail. We have both permit-required and non-permit-required confined spaces on our campus. In the event that we arrange for an outside contractor to perform any work that involves permit-required confined, the contractor must provide written permit-required confined space program meeting the requirements of the OSHA standard.
If a contractor is required to enter a permit required confined space at Amstead Rail, it will be the responsibility of the contractor to comply with the OSHA confined space requirements and to do the following. Obtain any available information regarding the permit required space hazards and entry operations. Coordinate entry operations with both the Amstead Rail personnel and the contractor's personnel that will be working in or near permit spaces. Provide Amstead Rail with documentation about the permit required confined space program that the contractor will follow. Submit a copy of the confined space permit at the completion of the job to the Amstead Rail safety engineer. Have made arrangements for a viable confined space rescue if it becomes necessary. Have a qualified attendant assigned to monitor the entrance. A completed confined space entry permit posted at the space. Another area that holds very serious consequences if proper procedures are not followed is energy isolation, or you may be more familiar with the term lockout, tagout. Lockout, tagout is defined in OSHA as standard 1910.147. In meeting the OSHA standard for lockout, tagout, contractors are responsible for furnishing their employees with all of the required materials to achieve a zero energy state on equipment that they will be working in or around. In some instances, Amstead Rail may provide a maintenance employee to act as a resource for the contractor to use because of unfamiliarity with the facility or equipment. However, the responsibility for lockout, tagout lies with the contractor. Once a plan for locking and tagging out an energy source has been made, the lockout-tagout operations must be approved by the safety engineer or a qualified maintenance representative that can verify the equipment is in a zero energy state. Fire prevention is one of the most important and most impactful topics we want to cover. Our goal at Amstead Rail is to prevent all fires from occurring in the first place and to protect the lives and property of everyone, including those visiting our campus. This is why it is important to follow all fire prevention processes and procedures that are in place. One of our key mechanisms to prevent fires is to issue a hot work permit if your work requires you to weld, cut or grind metal, or have an open flame like a torch for cutting or brazing. The hot work permit can be issued by the site maintenance team. If you need to perform hot work, we require that you remove all flammable and combustible material within 35 feet of the area where the hot work is taking place and have a fire extinguisher on hand. If you are issued a hot work permit, please follow the instructions on the permit and do not start any hot work until the permit has been issued. Most contractors are completing work on our campus that require the use of tools and equipment. We want you to know that you are responsible for supplying all of the tools, equipment, and materials necessary to safely complete your job. You are also responsible for your work site, and we ask that all work and storage areas be kept cleaned and in order with cleanups occurring at least on a daily basis. If a work area is left in a disorderly or unsafe manner, you will be called back to clean your work area. While cleaning up and while working, tools, equipment, materials, and other debris should be kept out of aisles and walkways and away from exit doors or any outside doors to avoid creating any fall hazards or obstruction of travel paths. If you generate waste during your work here, you are responsible for properly disposing of it. Each plant has a designated accumulation area for the disposal of universal and hazardous waste. This would be for items that fall outside of ordinary waste and would include items like paint cans and light bulbs. If you feel like you have waste to dispose of that contains potentially contaminated materials, this must be coordinated through the site environmental engineer. To avoid any risk to our watershed, please do not dump or store any waste outside. Your work here may require the use of industrial vehicles like forklifts or aerial lift equipment. We ask that all contractor-owned fork trucks must comply with all applicable OSHA standards, including having seat belts and up-to-date inspection. All aerial lifts and scissor lifts must be equipped with a certified attachment point. We also require that only properly trained, qualified contractor employees may operate fork trucks, lifts, or similar equipment on our site. The final section of our video training covers the items that can have a great impact on our environment both inside and outside of our plants. 
Our campus sits in a very environmentally sensitive location, and extra caution should be taken not to adversely impact the ecosystem around us. The first way for us to do this is to know what chemical hazards are on our site and also limiting certain compounds from having a presence here at all. Because of this policy, all chemicals must be approved in writing by the environmental engineer prior to being brought on site. This includes sample products as well. The approval of a chemical being brought on site can be accomplished by getting a copy of the Chemical Safety Data Sheet, or SDS, to the environmental engineer for approval. For safe chemical usage and storage on our campus, we have a few guidelines that we require everyone to adhere to. First, we ask that all containers be managed in a manner to avoid an accidental release. This is done by ensuring that containers containing chemicals are in good condition, are closed when not in use, and properly labeled according to the GHS standards. We also ask that containers are not transported anywhere when they are open or leaking. As you may have noticed, we have a waterway that runs through our campus. Because of this, we prohibit the discharging of any liquids through any storm drains. As you see here, all storm drains have been labeled for easy identification. If you have a spill of anything into the storm drain or anywhere on the campus, the spill must be reported to the environmental engineer immediately. We have spill kits located throughout the campus, filled with absorbents for you to use to contain or clean up a spill. While we would like any spill or potential spill stopped or cleaned up, we realize that personal safety comes first, and we do not want you to do anything that you are not comfortable with when it comes to a spill. If you cannot or don't feel comfortable addressing a spill, we ask that you contain it the best you can and that you report the spill immediately. This concludes the contractor safety portion of our video. Amstead Rail recognizes the importance of safety for everyone. We want your job here to be both a safe and rewarding one. Policies are intended to protect the health and safety of all who work at or visit our facility and to protect the environment around our facility. Accident prevention is an integral part of our operations and should be one of yours as well. Thank you for your time and a personal thanks for all that you do to contribute to the success of Amstead Rail.